Yo YouTube everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today's VOD, we have a poaching subscriber session and we're actually going through the boy War, his VOD. And what we're trying to do is see what he does well, what he can improve and he's actually a crimson slash iridescent player trying to compete in challenges. So we've got someone on our hands that is trying to really be, reach his potential and you know he asked me to be quite strict with him and just really see what he's doing well and things where he can improve okay. He's really trying to focus on that improvement area. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Let's go through. Off the break K he's going to go up top pair. Now normally there's a few things you want to consider off the break right first of all what is your role in this case he's going to be the ar player so the ar player wants to basically watch over his submachine guns that's your kind of starting position so we're going to go through and see what he's doing now me personally i actually like going up top third it's not something i do very often i actually normally take a route through the right hand side but i do like this one more i think it's the best thing to do now we're going to talk about power position and what your actual goal is up there okay so once he gets up there i feel like you really want to just play your life there if you end up dying here, what happens is you're going to spawn all the way out and you're giving the enemy the, the position, okay? So in terms of enemy position, we're looking for somebody potentially going through the other balcony, somebody through the street, maybe somebody into red and then somebody on the hill. That's kind of roughly what we're looking at, okay? So right now as number one, War's job should be to watch over his teammates that are going through and just make sure that he's basically having this power position so that he, they have like a sentry gun over them. That's kind of the main job there. You don't want to do anything crazy. You just want to play your life and make sure you get to that power position. So straight away, he's going to go through. One thing I personally like to do is I like to judge what happens to the enemy. So right now you can see he gets stunned, okay? This is really important. So there's two things to consider. Why did he get stunned and can he avoid that? Okay, so the reason he got stunned was because he chucked his own grenade. So it slowed him down slightly. And then what happened is the stun then hit this area. So can he avoid that? Yes. The way you can avoid that is working on your timing. So what he could do is instead of chucking his equipment and wasting those two seconds, right? You see right here, he's wasting those one or two seconds. Maybe instead he could just kind of prioritize running through and getting across. Now, will that still hit him? Potentially. But there's a chance if he didn't chuck that nade, he's around that door and he gets through. So let's see what happens now. He goes across. Luckily, his nade actually hits him so a really good nade there so shout out to war it's a great use of his equipment he goes through and gets two so right now let's look at the minimap together okay and this is what we're going to go through we're going to analyze what's going on so you have one teammate up top third you have one more teammate kind of with him so we're going to look through together so you have one teammate on the top third in this case war is going to be number one red okay we'll keep it nice and simple we have another team on the left we have one more teammate going around the hill are the teammates dead okay so there's going to be two spawns we're working with right now there's two spawns we're working with we know the enemies are going to be spawning around there and our team in this case war team will be spawning around here we always want to look at the current hard point okay so in this situation we're looking at p1 these are the two spawns and now we're gonna start to speed it up a little bit we're gonna get through the process so the teammates gonna should spawn around there two of the enemies should spawn around there so right now you are now three versus two if you're war in this situation all you're trying to do is watch over your teammate that's it nothing crazy just watch over your teammate let number two get on the hill watch over your teammate we don't know where the other two are just let him sit on the hill and be a sentry gun over him if you feel like there's no pressure here, then put your assistance on the left. Your job now, if you're war, is to simply watch over your teammates and make sure that the next wave of kills is easier to kind of go through. So let's see what he does here. He's going to go through. So one thing I don't want to see him is jumping off here. And one thing about war that I noticed for a while, he has amazing mechanics, really good mechanics. You're seeing it there with the drop shot. Really good stuff there. There you go. I personally don't love that. I don't mind it. But me personally, I feel like just, I feel like you're in a really good power spot here, war. So in this scenario, me personally, I feel like, I would have preferred if you went up top third here and let your teammate behind you get on the hill. The reason why is because it's easier to have somebody on the hill. It's easier to have somebody. You just got another kill. So we now know three people are dead, right? So we're looking for one. Let's just keep that guy there for now. It's easier, in my opinion, if you stood up top and guaranteed someone up top third and let your teammate then get on the hill because the only problem we have now is if you get on the hill like you're doing now, you're relying on your teammate to pick up top third. If he doesn't do the job that you want, then you are giving up that map control. So you can see that's kind of what's happening here. He ends up dying. So I just feel like personally, I prefer me kind of, I would have preferred you going top third. I don't mind what you did. I just think it would have been a little bit better to kind of go top third and look for that fourth player. In this case, he was actually there. And now you're going through and you can see you guys are now distracted by the player on the left. There's no one watching over you. And this is where I think a small mistake can actually cost you because you're going through. There's no one watching your right and you end up basically dying there for free. So when we look back here, you can actually see what you could have done instead is prioritize top third here. So I think instead of running on the hill, because realistically you're only guaranteeing what, five seconds here? If you can see your teammates behind you, and this is why I think once again, we need to just be a little bit patient, okay? In this scenario war, you went through and jumped off where your teammate was spawning there. Now, when your teammate's going through the middle, you're in a crimson lobby. 
there is nine out of ten times your teammate coming through middle will be the player getting on the hill so don't be afraid to stay off the hill maintain that map control maintain that map, map pressure and go for the second wave i feel like that would have been a bit more valuable there because now you see you die so your teammate dies you're now by yourself you're holding the area you're going through you're watching the head glitch but there's no one watching middle so once again mini map awareness okay i don't mind you sitting in a spot where you obviously thinking okay they're going to come through the top okay so in this scenario i don't i see where you're coming from you're like okay they're going to come through the top i understand it but my only issue with this is Look where you're sitting. You're sitting on this side of the hill, right? You're sitting on this side of the hill and you're watching this top area. Why not sit somewhere where, think about it. Look where your teammates are, okay? You have two teammates there. You have one teammate next to you, also watching that same area. And you have another teammate on top. So you're basically saying that this one player on the enemy team is worth three of your teammates. And that's the issue for me. You're basically leaving this whole red side open. What I would have preferred is you playing a different angle somewhere close to the wall where you could watch this right side because again this is the one that's empty if you look at the map this is the side that's empty you could have watched this side from an off angle so that your teammates won't actually able to shoot you so instead of you know having three people worried about number one what i think you should have done is been in another corner and just simply watch this area so it's all about your positioning there i feel like your angle was slightly off here i would have preferred you standing right there maybe go prone there and right now as soon as your teammate gets there you need to be turning around quicker so this is once again your minimap awareness. As soon as your teammate pushes that area, so right now, look, your teammate's right there, right now. This scenario, you need to be backing away and watching behind you. I understand why you did that, but again, you just left way too much time and he ends up going through. So for me, just being a little bit more quicker there would have been nice. Not a bad play from you. Again, getting on the hill was never a bad play, but I feel like you could have been a little bit more valuable there just by playing your position and watching over your team. It's okay, though. It's not the end of the world. Two people go down. I'm not a fan of going through middle. I think you should have went through the right there side rotating. He ends up going through. He's going to end up spawning you out here. So now automatically we got the new spawns. So just for everyone at home, let's go through the process. What is happening now? P1 is done. So we're now going into P2 on Karachi. So let's get P2 open. We're going to do it nice and simple. Every single hardpoint has its own spawn process. So P2 right now, the spawns are, are fairly simple once again. They're quite similar, to be honest. You, you could spawn like... You could spawn around there. Sometimes you spawn a little bit back around there. I think most of you will spawn around there. And the other side you'll spawn around there. So to be honest, the spawn of P2 is quite simple as well. You're going to spawn around this area here. And then you're going to spawn around there. So, same thing. In this scenario, we are spawning here. So, we expect the enemies to be in kind of power position. So, let's see how you play this. So, your teammates are pushing through. They're jumping through the back alley. You're going to go across. You're going to help them out here. You're going to get through. Go through the back alley. Your mechanics are fine. Your slide counting is fine. All that good stuff. Like we kind of mentioned, we know where they're going to be, okay? We expect them to be in that office area. We expect the enemies. Right now, we have how many people? We have all four of our team, okay? So, right now, War, you have your whole team not uh kind of stuck in this scenario your whole team is stuck here so we don't have a lot of map control we know the enemy team are likely to be set up they're going to be going for a break here so they're probably going to have something like this okay they're probably going to have something like this maybe one going through middle just something like this so right now your job is to be basically as resilient as possible and get that first wave of kills so the first thing i think you should have done is use your trophy system for me a big big thing is using your trophy system the second thing is look at your slide cancelling out you see your slide cancelling out your the timing you're trying to get through is you're basically saying if you slide cancel and he's not there you're going to carry on running this is where i think you can adjust your pacing a little bit so something we mentioned in our conversation is you're trying to be like sib right like a fast aggressive ar but i think this is where you can learn from someone like scrappy right someone like scrappy right now would kind of hold this angle a little bit more so the angle you're holding now he would just hold it he would hold it for a second longer put a trophy down be patient and wait for that first kill sometimes it's not about running around the map it's about getting that first blood in this situation you guys have very little map control so you should be prioritizing those first bloods to then gain map control. That's your goal. Right now, you're stuck in this circle here. You want to get these first kills. Once they're done, you then want to be developed into this second circle. So in this situation, I feel like you should be a little bit more patient and go for some kills here. And you can see, actually, pre-aims you gets the kill. And now what's going to happen is, because you're, de you're dead now, your teammates are now in a 4v3. He ends up dying. It's now, look at the kill feed. It's now 3 versus 2. And what happens is... This is a really bad scenario to be if your team dies here. Let's see what happens to your teammate. Okay, so you got quite fortunate here. Let me explain. Your teammates all died here, okay? Let's say that this teammate right here also dies, okay? Everyone else is dead, by the way. This is the last player up. Let's just have a look and see what the effect would be. And this is why I think one kill could really change the impact of a hill. Right now, you have three teammates that are dead. You are coming through this back alley. Okay, let's get rid of this for a second. You are coming through this back alley. Your other teammates are going to be spawning behind you, right? So they're all going to be spawning here. This teammate, let's just say he died as well, because it's quite a high chance, right? Let's just say he died as well. What you now have 
is a really bad scenario because the red team now have you trapped on this side of the map. Not only are they trapping you for P2 now, they have also got you trapped for P3. So can you see how that one effect that you just made, that one play you just made by pushing that back alley, that pushing that back alley and dying, you left your team in a 4v3 who then get traded. So it's so important to prioritize that first blood. We don't realize this when we watch like Scrappy or Dashy or any of the pros play, they get that kill and they just put so much pressure on the map. We don't realize that, the impact of that one death has. Because if your teammate dies now, it's very simple. The enemies are going to simply set up like control. They're literally going to set up like control. They're going to have one person there. They're going to have one person there. They're going to have one top third. And then they can even have somebody up there. And what happens now is they keep you trapped here for the remaining of the hill going into P3. They've got you trapped here. So you got quite fortunate that your teammates play his life here. Go through. Once again, trophy system. We need to be using that. And now your teammate dies here. So this could be a little bit dangerous to see how you play this out. Straight away, one thing I want to see you use more is your trophies for sure. I like the play there. It's a good jump shot. Great play there to get out of that one. It's a really good play. Good finesse. Almost got that one. I don't mind that at all. I don't mind that at all. I think in that moment, you play that pretty good. The spawns are going to flip here. Your teammates somehow managed to go through. So we should now know where they're spawning, right? They should be spawning on the other side of the map where you just came from. So, so far, it's been okay. I think, like I said, there's a few kind of small things um, I feel like we could potentially work on. But like right there is a perfect example again. Look at the difference in gunfight. This is actually funny because this is the exact gunfight you had from the other side. So earlier on, we're going to quickly go through that again. Look at your first death there and look at the difference, okay? This is your first death. You're going through the left stairs. You're playing these stairs. Look at the difference in you and the enemy. You are playing a wide angle and you're not ready for the gunfight. That player has jumped through office window and he kills you. The exact same gunfight. The exact same gunfight from the other side. So in theory, you should have done the same thing. You should jump through and be ready for the gunfight, which you have done. But look at the difference. You see the difference in this angle? He's not, that was your body, by the way. If he was out here wide, you may have got the kill. But the fact that he's stair glitching that, he's so hard to kill, he ends up taking you out. Look at the effect that now has. So you're seeing this from both sides. You've died both times now. Guess what? Your teammates are now on a 4v3. You've spawned out. Let's see what happens here. And you're seeing the domino effect of these kind of challenges. Right now, this is where I think you can really get tunnel vision, okay? This is what people really need to realize in this scenario. 25 seconds left. Let's paint a picture together. What's going on, okay? So right now, what's going on is... We're the red team that like we mentioned. We're on P2. We're currently on P2 with 25 seconds left. The blue team are going to be spawning around there. Okay. The red team, just like we see, are spawning around there. With 25 seconds left, we need to analyze the situation. Is this worth contesting the hill? That's the question. Is this worth me contesting the hill? And I think everybody has this kind of thing where they need to be involved in all the action. But sometimes the best play is taking the route, setting up for the new hill. You don't have to be every at once. You can't be on the scrap time and on the rotation at once. So right now you have three members, okay? We can see together, there are three members of your team all going for the old hill. So realistically, even if they were to get this or not, let's just work something out here. How many seconds will it take for you to get towards P2? Let's just have a calculation. I'm gonna say for you to get towards this area, it will take you about 15 seconds to get to this area. At that point, there will be 10 seconds left on the hill. Let's just play this out in a perfect scenario. You're going through middle, you're going through middle. By the time you get here, your teammates kill everyone. Let's just say your teammates kill everyone, okay? Your teammates are in a three, they kill everyone. What would happen here? In a normal world, they would spawn here. But there's something we haven't considered. What we haven't considered is this number three, during all this action, he took a route. He took a route, why? Because he's setting up for P3. He's setting up for P3. So while all this action is going on, he has taken a route. Now, in this scenario, the, the hill is still active. So once you get these kills, the game is going to realize that P3 is open. They're then going to spawn behind you. What happens is you've now lost spawns. But like I said, this took you 15 seconds to get there. So you're only playing for 10 seconds of P2. The point of this is not every single person on the team has to go for scrap time. You need to be prioritizing those rotations when you can. So right now, when we look at this hill, what I think you should be doing instead is analyzing the situation, okay? So we're going to look through together. With 24 seconds left on the hill, we have three teammates there. So you should be thinking, okay, I have three teammates on the hill going towards the new. I'm in a position where I need to worry about the rotation. I need to make sure that we're setting up for P3. So what I would have personally think would be a better play was saying, you know what, I would, where, where can I be right now to be in the best spot? I would personally say top third. If you're sitting top third like here, you know your teammates have the right-hand side covered, okay? If you can somehow watch this middle alley and watch this left alley, right? Let's say you're sitting top third, like 
maybe maybe up top third right right here you have so much intel and what you're automatically doing is you're telling your teammates where they are you're pinging them you're calling them out you're automatically keeping the enemy team trapped in this box so not only are you able to potentially get the scrap time here you're also guaranteeing that rotation for p3 and that's the key difference here war i want you to really focus on that in the game slow it down think right right now i don't want to see you for 20 seconds going to help them i would rather see you rotating because right now there is no way you know instead of like right now you're basically here this is what you are you're right now you're here instead of being what i think you should be top third and the only reason i think that is because right now if i asked you who's flanking right now you have no idea there they could be somebody right now going for spawns and you have no idea okay so look at this scenario if somebody's on your left now you have no clue because you're not checking it so look what you do you go through you go through and i actually want to check something i want to see your impact on this gunfight and what would have happened if you weren't here let's let's find out together perfect your teammates both died so you being here has not saved them you actually have done nothing in this scenario right you put some shots down and you've done nothing and you're now rotating in this situation in this situation you are basically haven't contributed to your team in any positive way now most of the time people do this and i'm being quite harsh but you haven't done anything valuable here you've gone here your two teammates are dead anyways i would have preferred you being top third holding the flank even if nobody pushed it what you would have at least realized is that they're all going through the right you would have gained information but instead because you're now standing here there is no information we don't know where they are now this is really important let's look through together look on the mini map with me and look where your teammate just spawns the reason why he spawns there you might be thinking but my teammates are behind me the reason why he spawns there is because when you pushed out just like we mentioned when you pushed out somebody on the other team either spawned behind you or they took a route they took a route and the game flipped the spawns so in my opinion you right there were in control now whether you get a win or a loss in this game whether you wherever your kd is going to be this doesn't show on the stat board and this is what i want people to learn these intangible things right here so we just saw the effect this has was in a scenario where he's not really doing anything of value he's now retreating back his teammate spawns out and it all comes down to his teammates winning the gunfights and now you can see you kind of in a weird spot yes you get that kill i think you're quite fortunate and you somehow manage to make it work your teammates end up dying and now it's kind of a mixy scenario to be in right so now it's a little bit mixy i think this was actually okay you guys actually it actually worked out okay but i think that was a bit risky so i'd rather see you rotate earlier and hold those power positions in this scenario now you're doing a good job you're holding the right let's go back to the hill and see what's going on okay p3 where do they spawn on p3 went through p1 we went through p2 let's go through p3 now on p3 there's two spawn points one is around this area here one is around the bridge okay that's generally the spawn points around those areas there so in this situation you are basically holding this area here i don't mind this i like this off angle i personally feel like the better angle sitting is right there because you're less likely to get traded but for the first kill i'm okay with this your teammates are playing around the bridge area so right now what you're kind of waiting for is waiting for that first blood so sometimes you're waiting for that first kind of uh that first line of attack that first blood as a team and then you guys can get the heal which is okay so right now i don't mind you being a bit patient waiting for that first kill because it's all about the map control once you get that then you guys can break the hill together let's see what happens there so you're going through i do expect them to push you there you go there's one immediately i like the reposition from you i do like the reposition this is why i mentioned earlier so i actually said this as well i like this spot to get one kill this is a good spot to get one the problem is you're more than likely going to get traded from here so i think immediately as you get this kill i would just expect the trade okay i think one thing you could have done as soon as you get this kill don't panic here you've got time turn around and chuck a stun right there i think, I think you could chuck a stun in that car okay because you see you slide out now i think now in hindsight obviously i can say this because of the timing i do understand why you did this because he could have been right behind you but i think if you chucked a stun there and just went out a bit slower you would have got that kill and now you kind of overcommitted and ended up dying so yes it was a good spot originally it was a good spot for one now you're going to spawn near the bridge side there you go you're spawning kind of close chicken so i know i said bridge but it depends on the scenario like right now instead of spawning bridge you spawn close chicken pretty similar either way they're going to spawn on the right by office or the left by this area now go top third perfect in this scenario i'll say watch mid look at the arrows look where all your teammates are watching right now i know you're going to watch over them i don't mind this but i personally think you should chuck your stun and nade and then watch middle for a second okay this is really important in this type of scenario you want to look at what your teammates are doing as well so we know that the enemy team are going to be coming through the right okay they don't have the hill they're going to be coming through the right they're going to be coming through the right and middle okay so in this situation the only thing i'll be curious of is one of them could take a route to the ladder let's just play the ladder for example my whole team in this case your team are all watching the right i'll show you in a second when i uh, switch the screens my whole team is watching the right so 
can you see what I'm saying right now? If you look at the arrows, so as I'm coming up this scenario, I'm always thinking of what are my team doing? I'm looking at the mini map and saying, right, what are my team doing? Where, where can I be impactful? And I'm looking at them and I'm saying, if I was to like ask them what they want right now, they would probably say, we have this area. Can you just make sure we don't get flanked from top? That's what I think they would like to say. So I think right now, I would like you to watch over them for a second. Chuck your stun and nade because we know they're coming through here. This is going to be your choke point. Chuck a stun and nade, chuck it over. But during that time, watch your middle for a second. Watch your middle. Why? Because you could distract them through middle. You can make sure no one's coming through middle. And you can guarantee that all the enemies are going to be pushed through the right, making it easier. But let's see what you do here. I think, personally, you're going to help your teammates and you're going to leave middle. And I was kind of right there. You're watching over your teammates, you're watching over, and you've completely left middle. Now, in this scenario, it worked out okay. Why? Because their whole team was coming through the right. But just like I mentioned, you never know when they come through the middle. For me, you didn't check it, and I want to see you be a bit more proactive there. You didn't even check middle. So right now, I would have preferred you chucking a stun and a nade, just checking middle at least for a second to make sure no one's there, and then doing this. Again, trophy system, I don't think you've used it once. I really want to see more trophies out of you. That's two down. The third's there. Once again, right now, your teammates have this. Go top third. Right now, go top third. You want to be stopping them from coming through middle. This is a big, big miss opportunity for me. You know they're going to be coming through this middle cut. I would prefer you, honestly, watching middle cut and going between the two. Because, yeah, watching over your team is great, but there's so much mid-map control that you're not even, like, basically checking right now. I think you've got to be a lot more careful. So you're doing that now, and you jump off. Again, I don't see you jump off there. Yes, a cruiser's coming in, but... I don't know if that's why you jumped off. I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt and say that's why. But if it isn't, then there's no reason to jump off there. And that's something I want to see you working on. It's that timing and patience. You're seeing you're actually outgunning everyone. You, I don't think you've lost a gunfight, but it's timings like this. Just like I mentioned, I want to see you be more proactive and set up in those spots. I want to see you there already, and there's no reason to jump down. And that's the key difference I'm seeing. You're doing these constant positions where you're just you're in a good position and you kind of not panic, but you kind of just do a silly play and like overcommit to, to random stuff. You don't need to do that. Going through, trophy goes down. Finally, we're finally using our trophy wall. Love to see that. My teammate spawns in the right. We know where they're going to be. They're going to be on their side. They're going to be coming through the left. Let's see what happens there. Once again, you're kind of giving up a power spot to go to the back. I don't mind this. They're not really going to spawn there. Again, you know the spawns there. You know you've got the knowledge right now. You know they can't physically spawn behind you because we're on P3. They're going to be spawning office side, okay? So you're going through. You're going through. Right now, I, I can see the confusion. You're kind of like, where they're coming from? Yes, maybe one pinch all the way around. I think it's very unlikely. Very unlikely that somebody from office went all the way around to the back alley, to be honest with you. I would have been okay with you just staying up top there. Just staying up top, kind of holding that area. You're going through. Let's see what happens. Okay. He ended up pushing through anyway. That, that was a weird play from him, I'm not going to lie. And once again, I feel like you're just you're in a good spot there. You don't need to jump down here. Like, like you're in a power spot there. You don't need to jump down. Like, I think you do this a lot. You're kind of panicking because the game isn't coming towards you. And you're like, I need to make a play now. I need to make a play now. Sometimes let the let the game slow down. Let the play come towards you. Like, you're in a good position. And I feel like you're always jittering around to get to that spot. Even though you're already there. And now look, now you're in the back foot. If I asked you right now, where would you rather be? In this situation, where would you rather be? Would you rather be... Wait, let's erase it real quick. We're on Karachi. So we're going to P4. We're going to our first P4 rotation, right? So if I said to you right now, where would you rather be? You know the blue team are probably coming through their side. Um, there's two main spawn points on this side as well. So you've got one spawn point, which is going to be here. And then you've got one spawn point, which is going to be around like there. In this scenario, okay, be patient. For the last 10 seconds of P3, you were, you were top here. So you were very, very early, essentially. In this time, because you were early, you started to panic. You started to panic. You started to go find people. But I would rather you be patient. Be patient. Let your team get map control. Even if you played in top church, okay? I think this is a really big skill that I'm seeing people... Um, I think this is one of the skills I think people suffer with the most is the lack of patience in these scenarios. When they set up early, and I do this all the time, and I've started to get a bit better at it, but when you set up early sometimes, it's okay to wait there. Like You don't need to panic. Just wait where you are. And just let the game come towards you. You know they're going to eventually push this area. I'd rather you be sitting up here, spawn trapping them. Every time they push through, they're kind of trapped. Then jumping down and dying. And now you're all the way there. I would rather my main AR player be on the bridge, being impactful and stopping them from pushing. Then over committing, dying and being pushed back there. You see where I'm coming from? That's the main difference. We're going to go through. And just like I said, now you're behind them. We're going to go across. Luckily, your teammates clean up some kills. There's a nice third. And that's going to be all of them. Now, all you're doing is you're trying to get back to the position that you were originally. So once again, same thing. I don't need you to be on the hill here. You are the main AR. Your teammates behind you. Let them get on the hill. You just need to sit up bridge here. You're the AR. You're supposed to be the sentry gun. Right now, you're coming to the hill. You don't need to do that. I don't know if you meant to jump on the, the ledge there, but I'm going to say you did. 
you should just stay on the top there you don't need to be on the hill your teammates behind you and now both of you on the hill watching the same thing again it's just lack of control you have a really good shot you have a really good role there to just watch over your teammates and you're constantly over committing you're constantly putting yourself in bad positions and you're just like trying to have these crazy gunfights you don't need to right there was just a waste of like 20 seconds this whole hill could have been a lot more smooth on your side let's go through see what happens there middle is empty so you pick it up good play from you teammates got the right again pick up those empty lanes i feel like sometimes you're like i need to do everything i need to get those 50 bombs but like look how good your shot is bro your shot is unbelievable and they're just making crazy plays sometimes you don't need to do that just trust your shot and work on your positioning work on your awareness that like, this is better this is better for me you're going through i want to see you sit middle this is good you now all you're doing is funneling them through the right you don't have to be involved in that you don't have to be involved in that you're funneling them through the right even this is a good play you're repositioning you're gonna you know let him chase you you're buying time i don't mind this it's a good play from you great play you can take out one your mechanics are good your mechanics are really clean your gun skills fine in this scenario once again you're pinching them let's see how you play this you should be worried about the left air you should be worried about the spawner be a little bit cautious about the spawner again you got your equipment to work with and there you go yeah so i think right there the only thing i would say is once you get that kill i don't know why you didn't really check that corner properly the corner you just about i thought you're going to check that to be fair so we know they're spawning on your left simply because your teammates are spawning out so this is a really good play once you get this opening kill you're in a position where your teammates are you know you're basically distracting for your teammates and once again i feel like around this corner use your stun use your nade like just slow it down a little bit and look what you do you kind of overcommit. i think you will find to check that corner you probably would have got a two-piece there but okay. not the end of the world 20 seconds left okay right now we need to be going top third we need to be going top third we need to be staying off the new hill let's see what you do there you go you're going top third this is good once again we need to see you actually take care of that ar position i want to see you in a power position and just stay there i don't want to see you jump off in the hill that was a crazy gunfight again just a little bit aggressive there go top third watch your right here i want to see what you're right good stun and nade this corner maybe this is good the only thing i'm a bit cautious of is behind you yeah i was gonna say not, not even top church i was gonna say more behind you i just think one thing i'd like to say okay in these scenarios something i learned from kenny okay i think you'll like this war something i learned from kenny is about spreading the map in these scenarios sometimes in this situation when you don't have maximum map control one thing I learned from Kenny, I think it was really, really impactful, was instead of sitting on top of the hill, so right now, this is the situation, okay? You have a teammate on the hill, and you're sitting basically top third here. The problem is, because the, it's not the start of the game, right? We don't know where they're coming from. You have a teammate coming through here as well, and then you have another teammate probably kind of spawning out. We don't know where they're coming from. We know roughly they're coming from the right, okay? So we know one's on the old hill. We're going to assume one might be coming through middle, because they had that office control. We're going to assume one's coming through this area and maybe one's coming through third, right? One thing I really like what Kenny did is instead of like sitting here and kind of, because he's in the middle of nowhere in terms of, we don't have full map control. Let's say you get four down, it's fine because you know where they're coming from. But right now, because we don't have full map control, just like you saw in this scenario, let's play it out for a second. The problem with being where you are now is we don't have any cover behind us. Like, like you're seeing now, there's somebody in front of you. There could be somebody on your left. There could be somebody on your right. You're kind of out in the open and you're seeing it happen now. You end up dying, right? So what Kenny did that was really good. I remember doing it at Champs against New York. Instead of sitting there, he spread the map out. So as they are, instead of sitting there and being vulnerable, because like you saw, you get pinched, he actually spread the map out. He sat at bridge. And what happens is most people don't really look for that play. So him being on bridge, he's playing it a bit safe. He basically has the whole of this right side. So his teammates know he can't. they can't get shot from the right. And if they do, he'll be able to call it out. But it's just a good play to have sometimes in your back pocket. Because now anyone that goes through, they're not really going to be looking for you. They're going to be looking for the player up here, which was where you originally were. So this player, Church, he was going to push through and look for you. You might have been able to see him. So sometimes instead of being in the obvious spots, stretch the map out, stretch the map out, play some off angles, get those kills. Once you get those kills and you've cleared your map, so imagine you get this kill, right? And you now know for a guarantee all four of them on the right, then you can push through. You see where I'm coming from? It's only in scenarios where you don't know where they are at the middle of hills. Like right now, we don't know where they are. They're kind of all over the place. They could be one behind us. It's just a bit difficult to play. So make sure to spread the map out and make it easier to set up go through let's see what happens now you're gonna break it through the front again this is a good play i like this play watch your top third great shots watch your left maybe again same thing we've seen this constantly from you constantly 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 there's no map control there's zero map control from you and you're running on the hill you're running on the hill and you're dying you've done this about four times this game you've died running till four times i think i've counted and every single time you've done that your teammates have got the kills 
So right now your teammates clutched up, but I'm going to blame you. If your teammates die there, that's on you. You just give them 20 seconds. You need to be more patient in these scenarios. The game is so early. You've got so much time to play for. It's good that you're going for the objective. You're being objective based, but sometimes like right now you have no map control. You're going to die from either the left or the right. It's a very high chance you're going to die here. Like for me, I just feel like it's you, it's just not worth it. I thought it's not worth it. And you see it four times. Four times already in like one rotation. And luckily for you, your teammates are clutching up. But there's so many times where you're in positions where you're just kind of over challenging. You're leaving your teammates in 4v3s and they're somehow clutching them up. The problem starts to happen when your teammates don't shoot back. And you're trying to like escape these, these games solo queue and like your teammates aren't playing that well. Then it's going to cost you. Because you're winning your gunfights. But there's times where you're leaving your teammates in 4v3. And I think that needs to be, that needs to be something we work on same scenario here just like position wise i just feel like you know they're coming for your left you can see it clearly you can clearly see they're coming for the left i just think being in a better position here once again i just feel like this just wasn't the best position for you you're like there's so much map control you're losing here you're kind of just i think you're hard committing to one area and you just yeah i just don't i don't like the play from you i would have preferred you going somewhere else in this scenario like again just being a bit creative like right now even staying on this head glitch, you can see the whole door. You can see the whole door. Maybe backing away, playing the back stairs. Just doing something where you have more map control. You're early again. I feel like right now you're rotating very early. And when you do that, instead of sitting up in the best position, you're kind of just tweaking and you're like, oh, I haven't seen anyone. I need to like get aggressive. And look, for me, this looks like you're like trying to get aggressive to find someone. But you're just banking on them coming through there. But what if they come through your left in office, which is exactly what happened. You basically didn't account for that. Like, there's a high chance of coming through this left door. I would have preferred you playing an off angle or just doing something else. And like, this guy should have been dead. There's no way he should have killed you. But you just gave him that timing. This is okay. I don't mind this. Once again, what I would have preferred you to do here is be... You see this door here? Let me go through. Just be a little bit more fluid. I feel like right now that you're, you're holding one position at a time. But I think you can do a lot more than that. This door here, what you could do, okay, is you could actually stand exactly where you're standing now on this ledge. There's three spots you can stand. You can stand right here, this head glitch, and you can see the right hand side. You can stand on this head glitch here, and you can see through the door into the other door, and you can stand on the left. I would rather see you go between all three. I don't know why you're not kind of going between all three, because I think you're good enough to, to do that. When you watch someone like Kenny once again, I think that's someone that's a really good example. He doesn't just stand there. Like, he's not just watching this one head glitch. He's going between the three, because that way you get so much map control. So you can watch this right side, then you go behind the head glitch in the middle. And then you can watch the door. Okay, so now you're watching the door. And then once that's done, you go through the left. And you watch the left stairs. So now you're basically being as impactful as possible. You have this whole area. So instead of just staying there for a second, I'd rather you go between the three. And the good thing is, because you have your equipment, let's say you're standing here, chuck your stun and nade, and then go through the middle. Just be a little bit more impactful in those scenarios, and I really think it will help you out. Oh, wrong screen. Let me go back to my monitor. Okay, okay let's speed through the rest of this this hill. I think nothing really crazy. How'd you die here? Let's see. Okay. Once again, I think just map control wise, I don't like your team setup. Like it's very very compact. Like three of you around here. I just, I just I'm not a fan of the setup to be honest. Uh, you go free and get pinched there. I like the stun from you, but yeah, it's just not a good setup from the team to be honest. You guys are very very compact. You end up getting killed. You spawn in the back here, 35 seconds, and it's the same thing. It's like a big domino effect. Every time you guys die. You're in a position now where you're at the back there. So I just want I think right now you should identify that a lot earlier. The whole team is just in this area where you're all in this one box. And I think this happened like three times, I think twice on this specific hill, and you're just stuck in a box. You need to look at this scenario and be like, okay, if my teammates are stuck in a box, how can I push out? How can I gain some map control? It's something we can maybe work on. Because what happens is now you're basically getting collapsed on. You guys get killed, you go through, and now you're on the back foot. It happens really, really often, and it's something we can look at. I know in solo queue, it's quite a common thing, but it's just now look at the effect it's happening. All four of you guys are now stacking the hill. You're going through. And yeah, again, even right there, I feel like just rotating is okay. In this scenario, like they, they're gonna have everything. Just, I know it's a lot of time, but I, I'm okay with you chalking this up. Start rotating, start worrying about the new heal. Okay, I wanna talk about something here. In this situation, imagine if somebody was top third from the enemy team. That would have really made it hard for you guys to rotate across. And my point is, when I spoke about that earlier, that's what I mentioned. Like, look right now, you see how you guys are going across for free? And this is the point I came through. You guys let them do that last time and they're letting you do that now and now you have the new spawns. So this game is quite common in terms of like in these diamond crimson lobbies. Yes, everyone has good gun skill, but you can still see there's a lack of spawn awareness. Like both teams let the other team spawn through. Once again, 
map control wise this is really really important and when we look through in this scenario one thing i'm noticing about your team specifically in this solo queue lobby and i want you to kind of be the player to, to stand out here your whole team is very very static your whole team is kind of locking down one area of the map right now you have no map control you have the hill and that's about it what i want you to do is as soon as you get that first wave of kills right now this is your map control that's it the problem you have is the blue team if they can set up right now they can have somebody on this head glitch they can have maybe one person on the top bridge they could have maybe two people breaking through this area right the problem you have is if they get a kill and then they trade effectively they're going to spawn you out which is exactly what happened last hill so what i want to see from you guys is be a little bit more aggressive as soon as you get a kill or two if you get a kill or two i want to see you push out so that they spawn further out and that way you've changed your map control your map control line is now changed to this you see the difference straight away just from you making that one play you have push your map control up that's honestly more of it. honestly you gain more map control i don't mind this starting spot i think it's a good spot to be in you're gonna go through i like the starting spot it's a bit of a good angle but like i said because there's no map control now your teammate dies so you can just see the issue you're going through and i can see the confusion in your head you're kind of like where do i go what do i do and now you're second guessing yourself you're going to the top here once again you're watching through middle it works out okay there it works out okay there again jumping down like you're just you're trying to be in the action a lot which is fine but sometimes i think your position's good like right now once again like just go top third go top third there there's a guy on your right you literally have a line of sight on him there's a guy on your right you literally have a line of sight the guy behind you you can see him from where you are i don't think you need to do this like i just don't think you need to do this extra player for me i think it's a bit unnecessary you go through and again just be up top third now like there's no reason for you not to be top third right now there's no reason for you not to stay up top third because now you're going through again you're like you're just you're doing good but there you go now you end up dying so it's like i don't think you need to overcommit there bro you're in a, such a good spot right now like get this kill stay up here kill the guy behind you stay where you are now exactly where you are now you have a stun and a nade why not chuck a stun and a nade there like you did last hill you did the same thing in the last rotation you got them weak here and you slowed them down instead look what you do you jump off you jump off for no reason and then you push out i would rather my ar watching over from the top third and this is exactly what we did last time. No one could kill you from it. Nobody could kill you. But straight away, you see the red door. You're chasing kills, okay? I think it's a big thing with you chasing kills. Now you go through. You've lost your power position. You're in a really, really bad spot. Now you're out in the open. Yes, you're watching the cross, but you're out in the open. You've got your stuns and your nades. There's so many small variables now. And you get gunned off a heady, right? And now your teammates push through. You're going to spawn bridge again. And you can see what's happening. Now your teammates lose the hill. And it's just time that you don't need to be given away again your teammates clutch up so i know you got the most kills here but there's a lot of times where your teammates are actually clutched up when you made a bit more of an aggressive overplay you go through and this 15 seconds yes you get a two piece but again for me that's irrelevant i think this is why stats are a little bit deceiving because yes like look at that you're getting 16 kills but it's like right there like four of those kills were just unnecessary they didn't really help you with the point they kind of just were flare kills for no reason going through i don't mind this play you're the only one there but once again just like i mentioned earlier for me map controls everything you have the high ground here your teammates top third are yes so i understand you jumping off but go with him go towards the catwalk keep the map control again you jump off you jump off and right now as soon as your teammate dies on your right as soon as your teammate dies right here this should be a red flag for you this should say to you okay we have four people on their team and we have two on ours i should not get on the hill because we have no map control but you get on the hill three two one you're dead so all you've done there is gain one second and you're a lot better than this so you don't need to be pushing the hill to gain one second and now you're seeing what's happening you're spawning out and this is what i want you to work on you ask me what do i work on and this is it being patient you're constantly going on the hill and look at the domino effect it's had the last minute and a half your gun skill is great by the way really good gun skill i think your gun skill is better than me but when i look at your awareness you're being sometimes a little bit too selfless i want to i want to see you more selfish and stay on top watch over your teammates let them get on the hill and just be impactful and like right now you're you're standing on a good area and again like you're on a high you're on a high ground here you don't need to overcommit. like look at you overcommitting. like just play the edge and now you jump off i just see a lot of kind of misplays from you and now you end up losing the lead and i really do believe the last two minutes i think you got in your own head a little bit i think you, you said that in the message as well that you started tweaking a little bit because of comms or something like that but you can see the difference in your gameplay. At the start, you played more confident. You were in power spots. As the game went on, you, you got less confident. You went through. And they're just walking all over your team right now. They're just walking all over you guys. There's one. Back away. You're okay. Yeah. Play your life. You're fine. They're going to push you. Again, you're in a good spot. Even though they got the heal, you're behind them. Turn around immediately. Back away. Immediately back away. Yeah. So right there. Same thing. You don't need to commit to this player. 
This player is more than likely going to push into your teammates and die. All you need to do here is back away. Look at what's actually happening in this scenario, okay? This is exactly what we're, we're kind of mentioned in our chat. This is P5, okay? When you're behind somebody in this scenario, you are the player that's causing the distraction. So you're standing right there, okay? It's quite obvious that your team are spawning over there. Your whole team is going to be through there. You got one player weak, okay? This player weak, he, he's running in this direction. So it's quite obvious that your teammates are going to get the trade, okay? The rest of the players are probably coming through the left. In this scenario, there's no reason for you to commit and overshow yourself. All you need to do is get this first shots off. Yes, he didn't die, but he's going to die. You then back away, play your life. Be annoying. Let them chase you. Let these three focus their attention on you because then your teammates can push through. If they kill you here, then they're immediately going to push through and kill your teammates. And that's exactly what happens. We go through, you overcommit. Look at this, you overcommit right there. He's looking at you, you overcommit, you end up dying to two of them, and now they turn around and they're all focused on your teammates. Now your teammates go through, he's by himself, and again, he gets a two-piece. So your teammate clutches up, but now they're dead. So once again, now you're pushing from the same side. The worst case to be, the worst scenario for you to be in is this. Instead of you being behind them, it's to you be with your teammates. If you're pushing with your teammates in a four stack, honestly, it's not a good scenario because there's no pinches. Everyone on their team, all they're going to be doing is holding angles, putting trophies down, and you're basically playing three ARs watching three cuts. It's very simple for them to hold the lane. They're going to have one top third watching middle. They're going to follow you through the right, and they're going to get the remaining 30 seconds. So I would much rather you be behind them, getting a kill, being annoying, then overcommitting for no reason, dying, and now being on the other side. I hope that makes sense. Let's go through. 25 seconds. I don't think you guys are going to break this, and you're going to try it, which I don't, I don't mind. Um, but yeah, I, don't, I just don't see any success there. But yeah, you end up dying again. I personally prefer rotation there, uh, but I don't mind it. Is what it is. Try and get into map control. Let's see what you do. You're probably going to go the hill right now. Okay. You're going to go in the hill. I like this play from you. I don't mind this play. Watching the stairs, I think, right now is really important. I think watching the stairs is really, really important just underneath you. There you go. I would, I would focus more on the stairs. There's a guy on your left. Great play. Really good mechanics there. Like I mentioned earlier, that's two down. Um, we know the third's coming through red. Again, you've got your equipment. I really want to see you use your equipment in that middle cut there. Right now, for me, that this mid cut, you need to be using your equipment. Great play, by the way. Really good play. You play the hill really well in this scenario. Play the hill really well. You play your life really well. This is good stuff. That was really good from you. You play that really well. Your teammates could have done a bit better there. So that, that was perfect. I didn't mind you playing the hill that time. It was more when you're going for the hill when you have no map control. Again, look at your mechanics. Look at that double kill. That was insane. You go through, you know they're on your left here. And right now, let's see your AR skill turn out. Let's see what you do here. So they're going to come top third if they don't push you. So there's two options in this situation. He ends up pushing for the other option. I think that's a little bit harsh. It's just one of those where it's a timing thing. But again, it's something we need to consider. You didn't consider it. He ends up pushing through and you end up losing the gunfight. The game's basically even now. You guys down by 20. I think this is the game you guys should have won, to be honest. Um, again, you out kind of outgunned them, but it wasn't about that. It was just a lot of like silly plays that led to a lot of, a lot of time for them. Let's go through this together. Let's see what happens. You're breaking by yourself. Two down again. It's just never going to work out like that. I would always, always prefer you as the AR to go up top and once again, just be the sentry gun. You're always trying to, you're trying to do everything yourself. It feels like, like right now, like I know they're rotating. I just feel like you're just, you're trying to break into a hill by yourself. And I just don't think it's going to work. I wanted to play it out, but I just don't see this ever working. You're by yourself and you're just trying to do everything. You're trying to be him right now. Like I would rather you go up top third, let your teammates catch up to you. Like your teammates aren't even with you. Let them catch up, work together and then break it. As soon as you don't kill that guy there, for me, you're now in a bad spot. Your teammates are now behind you. They end up dying now as well. And it's just kind of, this hill's kind of over. This hill's kind of over. So again, I want to see you just be a little bit more, like where Rue is there, I don't mind that. He gets a kill as well. So I don't mind you going top red, just kind of playing for a kill or two and then breaking the hill together. Even right there. Like for me, this is screaming out, go top here. You're not going to break the hill by going through there. But if you go top red through that window, you can assist your teammates. And that's the thing I think I want to see you do a bit more is just hold those power spots. There's so many times like right now, your teammates are pushing through this side. Okay, you've got two teammates, two of them pushing through the right. You have one teammate, top pair, okay? If I asked you right now, where should you be? Where should you be pushing? I think this is where we, we maybe disagree because I feel like right now you personally should be going top red because this angle is just a lot better to watch over. You can watch over and then from there, you can shoot them off the hill. 
when you're running forward and you're being the player in the action, you have less kind of coverage. I feel like if you have a sub, it's different. But with an AR, just I would have preferred you going up top there and kind of watching over. Let's see what happens. You're going through, you're watching the left, your teammates die, and same thing. And this is my problem with it. It's like, yes, it works. Yes, it works. But look what happens. Sorry, I thought I was on another screen. Like, for me, you're just kind of running in. You're just so many angles to look at. You can't do that from here. You can't do that from the ground. That's more of a job for somebody up top. Now, look, you're going through, you're checking your left, checking your right, and it's like you just end up dying again. So sometimes by rushing the play, you end up taking longer. And I think that's a common theme in your gameplay. I'd rather see you slow it down slightly. Instead of rushing your play, slow it down, go up top third, and watch over them. It's a lot easier. Like what you're doing now, I wanted to see you do this last time. You see you're doing this now. I would have preferred you do that 20 seconds ago. The game's basically over now. But at least look, even what you just did there, you bought time for your teammate. And you could have done that by doing that a lot earlier. We're going to go through. I'm sure you're going to show the scoreboard. Yes, your teammates should have done better. Absolutely. You're looking at the score, your teammates should have done better. But I would say, arguably, like, I think you could have won the game regardless because there were so many times where I think you clearly had more gun skill than them, but somehow you went negative. And I'm like, that's a clear problem in your positioning and your awareness because you you mechanically were way better than them, way better than them. But there were so many 